Monday the 28th of July, 12.47pm, office, very hot. Teddy is in the front garden next door. He's wearing a pull-up nappy and a white t-shirt with a cartoon ice cream on the front. He doesn't have any shoes on. There is no sign of Casey or Mr Charles. The gate is shut, the small lever on the latch in place. Reaching towards some bright pink roses, Teddy picked a fistful of petals and scattered them onto the path, dancing as they tickled his sunburnt feet. A trowel and a green kneeling pad lay next to him. Mr Charles must have been in the middle of some gardening. When he reappeared, he wasn't going to be happy with what Teddy was doing, not after all the hours he spent fiddling with those flowers. In his left hand, Teddy clutched the little square blue blankets he'd been holding when he first arrived in the big posh car with Casey. He let the blanket fall to the ground, then grabbed more petals and watched as they rained down on top of it. When the last petal had dropped, he stretched towards a large rose, but caught his forearm on a thorn. Ow, he said, and he did a little jig as his face crumpled into a scowl. For a moment, I thought he was going to go and get Mr Charles, but instead he just squatted down and inspected the cut on his arm, dabbing at it with the blanket. I heard a door bang open and Mr Jenkins appear from next door wearing his running gear and studying his iPod as he looped some white headphones around his neck. Mr Jenkins turned left out of his driveway, then broke into a jog, oblivious to the toddler crouching in the garden next to him. Teddy stood up. There was a tiny trickle of blood running down his arm, but it didn't seem to bother him. He reached for more petals and then stopped. Something out of the corner of his eye had distracted him. Me. He turned and pointed a chubby arm at the window as he gasped. Fishy! I watched him bounce up and down, clearly ecstatic that he'd spotted the goldfish boy all on his own. He looked around for someone to tell. Fishy, Casey! Look, fishy, Grandad! But nobody came. I turned away from the window and glanced at the time in the corner of the computer screen. 12.55pm. That time was important. I don't know why it stuck in my mind, but it did, even without writing it down. At some point after 12.55pm, on that bright, scorching day, Teddy Dawson went missing.